Hi, this is Alia, and I'm back with another deck review. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, reviewing and exploring uh, the Tarot of the Silicon Dawn. Now, uh, this uh, deck is an old one. It might not even be... Uh, you might not even be able to get it now. Uh, last time I checked, there was only one on Amazon, I think, and it was selling for a lot of money because it's out of print, from what I know. That was um, for the, the this edition was in two two thousand eleven published. Um, Los Carabeo. I don't know if you can still find it, and I don't know if they're gonna come up with another uh, edition of this. Um, this is a very interesting deck. It opens up like this. The box is a little bit smaller than the other big ones. It has the book inside. And now the way we're going to do this, because if you have seen this deck or if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> this is a handful. All right. So, uh, over here, I have the, the cards, uh, I took them out. And then when I put them back in, because I separate them for you, and then I put them back in, and then they'll get messed up again. You see, because there's no way that you can keep them in order. Anyways, and then I have to put them back again. So, all right. So over here we have all the cards, and this helps a lot because there's a lot of extra cards. So you see these extra ones, but we have other extra here, here, up here, here. So you get um, a whole lot of extra cards. Now... I think we're we're gonna be using everything here, so I'll see how we're gonna we're gonna do this. Now it says, uh, let me find the information that I need, and let's decide what we're gonna do here. So this is uh, Margaret Trot, if I'm spell um, pronouncing it right. Uh, Egypt Arnes. I'll just call her Margaret, so that we get it clear what I'm talking about because I don't even think I will remember that. I think that she would prefer that. That's why she has it there or else she wouldn't even put it there. But I don't think that I'm pronouncing it right and I don't think that I'm going to remember it. So I apologize for that, Margaret, but I'm going to use your first name because it's easier for me and I won't have, I won't be stressing over remembering the name and I'm going to be stressing of how to do the review, which is the right thing to do for me. Okay, so this, this, this deck, I don't know where to start from. And this is not an easy review, just to uh, let you know. Okay, let me just first say that this is not a beginner's deck. There's no way if you're a beginner, you're going to be able to use this. Only if you are, you have decided that you're not going to go into the book at all, that you're going to just leave it in a drawer, and that you take out all the extras, and you're only going to use from ace to your um, king, and that's it. And that you're going to do it more or less the way that you know. But still, I don't think that you would be able to do that, even if you tried. Uh, all right. I don't know where I want to start from. Let me just start from the book or let's just go to the deck. Let's just start from the book. Now, this book has uh, different uh, languages. So we're going to, uh, it has English, Italian, uh, Espanol, Francais, and Dutch. And the pages that we get for English, I think 78, because I checked earlier, 78. So it's all these pages. And it has a lot of things in here. We do get a description. We do get, um, it says that it's based on, uh, she's using the thought system, but the visual of the, I think the right away or something like that, close to it, but not both systems, um, the Crowley, okay, the Smith, the, the Miners, a court mixed in ideas from the, um, that's from the thought. Okay, so it says that. So we're going to have a mix and match of different um, traditions or different decks. And then uh, Margaret, Margaret has switched the ones with the pentacles. But when it comes to, I think, the astrological, only the astrological signs, correspondences, associations, and correspondences. Yeah, associations and the astrological correspondences are swapped. Okay, so that, that's the, another thing that she has done in here. Okay, and then this is the book. 
Now here, to read this book, and not only to read the book, this is something that you should take your time with, uh, reading and exploring. The reason being is that it has a lot of information. A lot of people would say that it's written in a very poetic uh, um, style. Sometimes it is, because he's asking a lot of questions. Um, you see, it has a lot of question marks at the end. Like if you go through it, it has just it's so many questions. So it wants to make you think. And so it wants to stimulate that, that part of your brain where you're free to desi decide. So th this is not like um, bringing up all the facts for you. This is bringing up the questions um, to stimulate your brain, to stimulate your free will, to stimulate uh, your belief system and to challenge it. And that is something that a beginner cannot handle because if you're not used to and you don't understand the meanings of the cards, you cannot go that deep. Like for, for someone, let's say temperance is just temperance, the mixing of things. Whereas it's not just that. There's a lot of layers and a lot of depth when it comes to um, the meanings that we get and it depends what we're reading for and the reason that we're doing the, the reading. So sometimes it might be uh, to the surface of a matter. Sometimes you want to go deeper and just figure out um, things. So if you're doing, let's say, a coaching session with someone, you want to go deep. you you got to go deep. So doing a personal reading on the top layer, the surface, will not help at all because you don't know what you need to do uh, in order to, to get the outcome or to bring the result that you need. Um, sometimes things just don't happen because we have blockages from limit, limiting um, beliefs. Or there's other reasons that, you know, my, uh, you have other secret hidden forces that do not let you um, move in the, in the direction that you would like to. You, they get you a lot of distraction and they pull you away to different directions. So in this, um, in this um, little book, you get all this knowledge. So see, we'll talk about quantum physics to alchemy to uh, ancient Egypt. Uh, I don't even know how many different, like you have to be very well educated on the spiritual and universal matter so that you can understand what exactly this is trying to tell you. And that is knowledge, my friend. This is wisdom. And that's why I think uh, that people have a problem with this deck, understanding it. Because it's, it's not written so that information is given to you. She's not trying to give you the information. She's trying to help you understand why you would want to change your belief system. Why you would want to think in a different way. Why you would want to question everything that was imposed um, on you when you were a child. And why you're living the way you're living. And what is true and what is not what is happening and I know I'm talking too much but that's the only way that you can approach this deck there's no other way if you just want a review kind of I like it I don't it's it's not gonna work you will not understand anything so you need to if, you, if you're interested in the deck and I'm assuming because you're here you're interested in this um, so I, I have to say that you need to take the time and it's not something that you do at night before you go to bed so that you just kind of I read a little bit. No, it doesn't work like that. This is something that you take with you and then you close the book and you think about it throughout the day, the week, the month. Like there's some cards that are very, very, very powerful and they just make you think, question your, your, your own existence. And... Uh, I feel that no review of this deck will be adequate enough to um, show the proper respect for, for what this person has done for us. Seriously, it's not just taking the time to make a deck. It's, it's a masterpiece. That's about it. That's all that I had to say. Okay, so whoever understood, understood. Whoever did not, did not. And I'm sorry about that. I would love to do a part two and three, maybe, and maybe we should do that as a, as a discussion more instead of just, you know, me saying things. So this deck is a, is a smaller size deck. And this is the size of it. 
very small. I do like my cards small. I don't mind the size. I actually enjoy it. Um, I don't know if I would like it more if it was bigger. And then we have a lot of uh, extra cards. Um, okay. Now you see on the cards, you do get like a texture. Do you see that? Or I don't even know if that will show in any way. Maybe from the glare, you can, you can see what I'm talking about. It has like extra texture. Oh, you get it here. You see it? I'm trying really hard to help you. Okay, and you get uh, those extra layers. So sometimes there are things hidden. So over here, you get the wings of a butterfly, for example. Oh, there it is. It shows. All right, so you get this female, but she has the wings. So sometimes she has uh, other layers of the card kind of a hidden here. So you have to kind of figure it out what's there and why it's hidden there. Because she talks about the void. She talks about uh, kind of a, uh, not the other side, but things that humans cannot grasp with their uh, senses. She doesn't say it like that clearly, but you know, it's, um, it's, it's through questioning <laughs> that you draw these conclusions. Um, and you have to understand what is happening here. So you get the full. All right, and then you have some extra cards. Uh, I don't know if you mind nudity. I don't. I really don't care. I'm very proud of my body and all parts of it. I don't understand why I wouldn't be proud of what I have on me. It's part of me. Why shouldn't I be? Uh, and I just find it that it's sometimes, um, because it talks about a lot of, uh, she brings up sex and uh, even the tra tra tantric tradition and how to use, not to use sex as sex. It's not that um, <laughs> straightforward, but I don't understand why we, we would have a problem exploring that aspect on our cards. I don't understand why there's a problem with sex. I, I seriously don't. Why when two people come together, that's a problem and we should not be talking about it. And I don't understand that because everyone, everyone has sex in one point in their life. So why are we doing it, but we're not talking about it? And why are we uh, behaving like it's a bad thing? That's the way that you bring a human life into life, isn't it? What's wrong with that? I don't know. Should I be hiding my uh, cards? Should I be not talking about these things? So see what I'm doing right now? I'm asking all these questions just to stimulate your mind. That's what she does. And that's, that's very nice that she does. Now here, I'm trying to find a way to show this. Oh, you do see it. Okay, so that's added texture. That's a scene on the card that you don't get without the light. And now you can see it because there's light. There's three lights. <laughs> Not one, there's three. <laughs> you do see it now. And on top of that, I will make it even more clear to you. And find it somewhere because they okay I think I saw it here yeah, okay. I'm trying to help and it seems that it does not work right now for me okay 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 no 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 I cannot find it she has a uh, the cards down here that you can really see it with uh I think it was yellow uh, coloration or something. Maybe it's at the end because it's the, um, uh, the void there. Yeah. Do you see that? So this is this. See how she's holding the mask? It's this one. But you cannot really tell because it's the void. And the void is something that it's, it's, you can't see. It's, it's the void. It's behind the veil. It's out there. And she's asking if you want to see it or not. Do you care? Do you want it? All right. So these are the extra uh, cards that we have here. 
then that was the extra cards that people have problems with some of and that's the 99 uh, card so she has a 99 card for every uh, soup here and then we have different folds and then we have the deck all right so these are the bags reversible and very nice so this is a, a different kind of a art and now what I'm what I'm thinking is that the artwork sometimes it seems to be a little bit too much for a beginner even just the artwork because it's one thing that she has all the symbolism is another thing that she related to whatever she's saying here and then she has an added uh meaning hidden somewhere if if you can figure it out so there's a lot of going on on one single card so i think that this is more of a deck that someone would use at first for exploration like inner search and understand things about yourself uh the universe your belief system and your existence or whatever that might be uh, so I think that that is a very nice uh, deck to do that. Not so much for shadow work, but for actual um, evaluation of your current situation in relation to where you want to go, uh, given that you understand who you are. And that is a problem in the current um, world, that we don't know who we are. All right, so we have the magician here doing the magic. All right. Then we have the high priestess. Do not expect to see things that they are they're really familiar because they're not. Uh, so you, you will be seeing things that you need to read in order to understand. And for me, because she, she goes, she will throw a question, <laughs> but for me to explain it, it would just take longer because she has built up the information. She's building it up. That's what I'm saying. So it would take a long time. So over here is like, for example, do you see how it has the extra? Does that come through or not? Not at all, huh? Um, so I'll put it like this. No, huh? Closer, maybe. There's more. Anyways, uh, how that uh, the high priestess is it real? Is it not? Is it happening? Is it not happening? Do we have uh, this side, that side, which side? And how do we create the side? Then the empress and the emperor. This was the intention for the, them to match, in a way. I think here's where she's talking about the uh, uh, Meyer. What the? Is the extrovert, introvert kind of a thing? The 16 personalities or something? I think it's this uh, card. Anyways, uh, Hierophant. He has all this information on his body. This says, be careful who you're uh, getting information from. Are you sure that you've been given the proper um, information? What was the intent that you were given the specific information? And then we have the lovers. So the lovers, for example, uh, she's uh, saying that why does it have to be a duality? But we already have talked about that here. So she has talked, that's why I'm saying she's building up knowledge. So it's not that you can do a review and it's card, it's not by itself, it does not stand alone. It's like they're all uh, in the same web of, of information. So over here, she's like saying that every single one of these creatures uh, has a different color, right? So these are the, why is it the binary system? When you put these three colors together and you get white. So we know that th that life is a light because the word of the the light light which is god light or light or the higher i don't know where you believe in and i want to go into that um but let's just assume that not assume we all know that if you put these colors together you get white so and you know that the colors uh, there's three colors that everything i was initiated from you know that right uh, okay, so this this is a very uh, interesting one, the chariot. I really like this chariot, and it made me think, and now I'm going to sound crazy, but my thought when I first saw this 
was this. I said to myself, okay, what is happening here? So we have these little girls that they're um, creating this creature that it could be you, it could be me, it could be whoever. But what they're doing is they're connecting. You see that? They are connecting the wires. And you're like thinking, oh my God, do I have wires? Could my veins be the wires? Question mark. And if my veins were the, the wire, then what is my blood? Could it be one form of tangible electricity? And if it is the tangible um, form, the manifested in the real world, or the lower octave of the electricity, then what is its power? Am I crazy enough for you or not yet? Can I keep on going? Should I keep on going? Okay, strength. How to keep on going faster because things pop in my head and we'll never finish here. And I'll be, I'll, I'll be officially <laughs> labeled crazy by the end of this. <laughs> and, but I will go with uh, my friend here, Margaret, and we'll just uh, have a glass of wine and enjoy our craziness. All right, uh, fortune. Uh, this is a history, and history is an extra card. Why is it here? I don't know. But, and then justice, what is just? The hangman. The hangman. And death. Temperance. The devil. I seriously don't want to talk about that because if I start, I'll, I'm not going to finish it. We'll never get through this uh, review. The tower. The star. The moon. And the lovely sun. With the good and the negative. Judgment. And then the universe. And then we have, that's the Ace of Cups. And because sometimes when they get mixed up and you want to put them in order, they are kind of um, coded by uh, the colors. So here will be purple, yellow, red, and green. Uh, but another way that you can do that is just by looking up here. Because some of them might be like kind of a yellow, yellowish, green, black, Kind of a thing so you, you might get confused so then you'll just look up here so whatever the lines are if they're purple it's a purple family <laughs> you put it there so the ace of um cups ace of cups two of cups two three of cups the four of cups the five of cups and then we have the six of cups nice six of cups isn't it and as, I've, as i have said right there's added meaning to this because you get it layers with a textured kind of a thing going on here the seven some some cards it's more than others it's craziness look at that The eight, nine. Or what a beginner can do if you if you don't go into the book, because say like you can read the book even if you're not a uh, a reader of the tarot, you can still read the book. So independently, this could be just a book, but it just it describes the cards. But I'm saying that the knowledge in here is not necessarily based on tarot. It's universal knowledge. It's, it's a different kind of knowledge that you get from this because it questions your existence and things that relate to humans and the world and our experience here. So you could still read the book even though you don't do tarot and you can do tarot without reading the book. And how you could do that is you can take the um, right away and just put it right next to it and just kind of uh, compare it so that you understand the image 
if you really want to work with this deck and if you're a beginner, even a beginner in um, beginner in your exploration of the universal laws. Okay. Page. I'm getting something here not right. Okay. So that goes here. And then we have this. So there's a different order in the core cards when you put them all together. That I have not noticed because I thought, okay, so that's first. All right, doesn't matter. So that's the core cards. So you, you, you understand that we have the queen, the king. <laughs> this is probably the page and that will be the knight. Okay, so, and then we have the ace, two of pentacles, three of pentacles, there's nothing here, there's nothing here, <laughs> five, six, there's here. There's things here. Something's hidden here. Seven. Eight. It looks like a video game. Nine. And then we have ten. And then we have the core cards, which are the page. The knight, the queen, and the king. And then we have the ones. So this is the ace. And there's things on her body. They do get these wings a lot for some reason. We get these creatures that they're half humans, have something else. And usually it's the bottom part that it's something else and there's a reason for that do you see that what is that hmm and then the four the five six do you see six seven they're on down inside the earth. Eight. Nine. Do you see how it has some um, mathematical formulas here? Can you see that? That's what I'm saying. You have to have a lot of a different, um, a wider... Um, Like your knowledge should not be limited. And usually the people that uh, read the tarot, because we're exposed to so many uh, different things like Kabbalah and then astrology. And then uh, you get, uh, you have to read the virtues. Uh, there's so many things that we have to, to read as you grow with your uh, practice and your reading skills that we are exposed to so <laughs> many different kinds of information. Um, and it just takes you, every time it takes you even further, like you wanna go deeper and deeper and deeper. And you're like, okay, so what is it? What does it mean? How can I use it? Why now I see it like this? And last time in my reading, it came up like that. So you question a lot of times. You don't sit down and you know have a conversation with someone about it, but it works in your mind. It opens up other, because uh, you see relationship forming all together. Like for me, when I was doing a lot of readings before the coronavirus, it was kind of a weird that I was seeing death coming up repeatedly in so many people's readings. Not a death that had to do with their physical death, like as them, um, something bad happening to them. And it was something that I was working in the back of my head. Or I could see... Um, there's patterns that you see. There's things that you um, pick up. 
So like for now, I did the general rating for the year, not now, but for the year 2021. And if you haven't watched that, go watch that um, for all the signs. And I would see that there is a stagnated energy. It's only two signs that they had a forward movement, but it seems like the whole planet is not moving. We're just in a standstill. Things are slowing down. You get um, information and then that makes you want to explore. What is happening? Why it's happening? Is this related to what? Is it an energy thing? Is it, it's like so many things that come in your mind every single time you do a reading. Because you get into other people's energies. So you're, you're opening up your energy, which is a good thing, but it can be a very dangerous thing if you don't know how to protect your mental health. You need to ground yourself then. It's like having uh, a lot of different friends pulling you into different directions because you're tapping into their energy. And then you need um, to work on your mental uh, and if you, if you do that like every day, all day, not if you do one reading every, you know, just uh, once a month, then you don't have a problem. So it could be uh, not dangerous, but it could be not harmful, but um, it has an effect on us that we're uh, readers of every day, you know, reading um, because we get into other energies. And some energies are fine, some are not. They're so different than ours. So you need to know how to get yourself back to where you were if you feel good with yourself and you want to get back. Okay, so the Ten of Swords. So I just skipped all the cards, but I, I, I think like it's just kind of a song. And I'm, as I said, I would like to do like a part two and three and maybe have a discussion with someone about this deck and we'll, you know, kind of uh, elaborate on that. Because I find it very interesting and I want to have the book together so that we explore uh, with notes, like have taken the, my notes and explore with someone else their opinion and mine. That would be very nice to do. I, I would really, really love to do that. So if there's anyone else that is a tarot reader and would love to do that with me, then please send me comments or send me an email or whatever. Just contact me. You'll find me. I'm not that hard to get. <laughs> All right. So we're, that's it. That was it. This is a, a beautiful deck. If you have it somewhere in your drawer or in your uh, space where you hold your tarot, pull it out, start reading it, start exploring it, take the time and slowly every day just go through one card. Not as a pull, pull how we pull a card every day, but just, just take it from the beginning and start reading from the full and build up because that's what... Um, this lovely lady Margaret is doing uh, here. She's building up the knowledge. So if you start from the beginning with a full, not the full, because I think the full is at the end, um, the major icon. But if you start, like you start working with the, with your reading and the knowledge that it's in here. See how many question marks? Look at that. One, two, three, just right away. Without the four, five, like. That's the way she uh, talks to us. She writes to us as she would talk to us, but not, not um, on the surface. She goes deep. So do spend some time with this deck. This is a lovely deck. I really, really love this deck. It's one of my favorite decks. Um, I would never give it away. I enjoy it. I love it. <laughs> All right. So if you can get your hands on this, do, do get it. But don't spend, you know, a lot of money. Because I last time I checked, I told you it was very, very expensive to find. Anyways, uh, so that was the review of the Tarot of the Silicon Dawn. It was wonderful doing this uh, review for you. Uh, please do leave your comments if you have something that you want to ask. I try to answer to every single one of them. And some of them I do answer um, in my videos. So if you have something that you want me to explore, to talk about more, then do leave a comment and I will... Um, answer one way or another it was lovely doing this for you thank you for being here do explore my um channel and see if there is something else that you would like to watch there's a lot of uh, material there thank you so much thank you for your support and your love thank you for everything have a good one